Hi there, and welcome back to The EV Show. I'm your host, Michael Bream. You know, it's been about five years since we put an update on our channel, and I want to apologize for that. The shop's been incredibly busy, and we've been growing, but we have some fantastic projects going on in the back, and we've found enough time to film them. So we've got some new episodes coming. We're very excited to announce that. Thank you for sticking with us, and we hope you appreciate our new content. is going to Teslify this thing. Let's check it out. All right, so I'm here with Christopher Spicer, and Chris, we had to do some modifications to this car before we got started. We're going to put a 300 horsepower motor mm -hmm. and something that's not known for handling well, nope. stopping well, nope. steering well, nope. all that. So what did we do? What did we, we, we did some light modifications to this, right? So starting with the front end, well, we, we our friends it. at the uh, Airbolt Peak was kind enough to sell us a wonderful Willwood adapting kit for putting Willwood disc brakes on our front end, on our ball joint beam. And we got a nice set of coilover shops from our friends at MP. So that's going to help support our weight. This is going to help us stop the car. So we still have our beam springs. Yes. But we just added a little bit more because we're going to add about 200 pounds or so to the front, maybe 300. I think so, yeah. Overall, about 250. Difference yeah. between the gas tank. Right. Uh -huh. And then. This is billet out here, so it's a little unique, and that's because we retained the wide five bolt pattern yep. on this. Keep the stock look. Kept standard Volkswagen wide five, five on two hundred five. Right. right. And then with the added weight, we uh, decided uh, we go put power steering in here as well. So buried deep inside here is an electric power steering upgrade for the stock steering box on the thing. So we take care of some of the steering. Yep. Take care of some of the brakes up front. The yep. Suspension. I actually see a little uh, chrome bell up here. It looks like we got an electric pedestrian bell in there as well. That's it. All right. Can't sneak up on them. Okay. And then, so how much of the pack, I know we're splitting the pack between the front and the rear, but how mm -hmm. much of it is going to be up front? Uh, we have eight of the modules located up in, up in the front. So 24 kilowatt hour mm -hmm. out of 36. So basically two thirds of the battery up front and then the other one third in the back and that's where the motor's going to reside. Exactly right. Okay, let's go check out some of the other suspension upgrades and brake upgrades in the back. All right. Yeah. All right, so I'm pretty sure I'm seeing double here. I see two calipers. What's going on? Well, what we got here, we have our service caliper or brakes. So it's just your regular brakes. Yep. Hydraulic? Yep, hydraulic. Right. Okay. And uh, up here, we have our parking brake because our disc brake kit did not come with a parking brake. And oh. this allows us to actually control the parking brake with the gear shift. Right, so because we upgraded to the disc brake, we lose the drum parking brake. Exactly. Right? Now, we've done some of these before with the drum parking brake as well, um, but we like the Tesla because it can, it really clamps it, right? The car's gonna be heavy, it can park on a hill, and these work much better than a regular cable-assisted drum brake, right? That's the idea. Yeah. I mean, it was really designed for a 6,000 pound sedan, uh -huh. so I think it'll work in the thing, right? It worked this fine. Now, how are we gonna control the parking brake? Well, we're going to develop a small Arduino interface uh -huh. and we're going to use the CAN signal we have coming through the car right. to tell the parking brake that the park function on the shifter is engaged right. engaged parking brakes. So we have and a separate then, system that's running on a microcontroller mm -hmm. and it's going to be activated over the CAN bus from exactly. the ECU. Yeah, that's it. Wow, that is really slick. Now, what do we do with the suspension and the spring rate or anything like that in the rear? Do we have to change anything in the right. rear. Uh, we're waiting to set it on the ground, get some test runs on it, drive it around, see how it sits. Right. And we may have to change the torsion bars or simply click the spring plates down a couple. Right, couple so points. either adjust the torsion bars or go to a slightly larger diameter. That's it. Right, so pretty simple. It's got the, you know, it comes with the IRS suspension. Now we did, on the outers, we did replace the flange, mm -hmm. right? So um, we used our 930 CVs and MP yep. makes an off the shelf part to replace the, the little stub axle in there with mm -hmm. the 930 CV flange. So then that allows us to have off the shelf 930 axles for the rear here. Pretty much, uh, we did have to give a custom set uh, made, custom oh, length. Okay. Right. So, so the custom length, right. the flanges and the CV joints are and still. The flanges and the CVs are off the shelf. Right. Perfect. 
That's beautiful. All right, uh, let's move on to the rest of the car. All right. Okay. Well, so here's the interior. It's pretty stripped, although I imagine it was pretty easy to strip the interior. On Not much thing. material or anything. No. Right, right. Now we're going to do, uh, we're just going to keep the one factory gauge location up here. Mm -hmm. But we're going to do the AEM digital gauge. AEM this, digital gauge, right? yes. And then we're going to have um, a shifter down in the regular location, but we don't have a transmission. So, nope. So, what's the point? No, the point is we still have to be able to go to forward and reverse. Right. And uh, we were lucky enough that we're developing a product that will give us control over forward, reverse, and the ability to change our regen by the shifter. Right. And so a little bit more tactile than the touchscreen that we're used to with mm -hmm. the Tesla drive unit. Fantastic. Yeah. A little okay. more of an original look. You still have a gear shift in the middle of the car. Right. Right. Can't get rid of that. Then we wouldn't know what to do. Right. <laughs> and then we've got some work going on back here, although it doesn't all look like EV work. No, no, we were uh, lucky enough they did ask for a sound system in this car. So under the plate there on the driver's side, we have a small amplifier from Rockford Fosgate. And then we have our original 12 volt battery. And then hiding under here, we have our DC to DC converter that takes our pack voltage, converts it down to 12 volts, and runs all the small lower volt accessories in the car. Right. And this is right up your sleeve because you come from mobile electronics. Yes. Yes, you and I both share a mobile electronics history. I love it. Okay, yeah. got the business end. Business end, part of make it go. I understand what everything is, but you want to tell our viewers what, what we have going on here? Yeah, big overview is this is our drive unit. Mm -hmm. contains our motor and our inverter, controls our speed, controls our direction. So that one unit here is both the motor on this half and then the actual inverter, the motor controller on that half. Right? Yep. So we just have direct current going into it over exactly. there. Exactly, there's right. two feed wires and there's a large multi-pin control pit control plug down below there. Right. Over here on our driver's side, we've got our wonderful battery charger so we can plug it in, charge it up, and get going the next day. Mm -hmm. And then over here, we have our contactor box which has all of our high voltage controls yeah. and interfaces for the car. Yeah, so it looks like we have some pre-charging circuitry in there. We've got our low current high voltage fuses for stuff like mm -hmm. it's gonna have a heater and the power steering and the DC converter and things like that. Fantastic. And this is, of course, the smaller Tesla motor in here, too, right. a 250 kilowatt, which is still probably too much for the thing. thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But the installation is easy. Now, this is the subframe is the EV West drop-in subframe, so we didn't have to do any cutting. No cutting. Not, like, not even a notch or anything on the body. No notch in the nothing. body. It okay. all, uh, two holes for the, the torsional mount on the side, and that was right. it. Both right. of the original transmission horns and then the original front transmission mount. Right. So as far as the hardware, the motor just went right in. Yes. Axles went right on. Bolted they did. up to the flanges. They did. Yeah. But all the work is really in the details. In the right. Wire. In the wire. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Most most of the guys will spend uh, several days just on a contactor box alone. But same same for you. Yep. Days in on that one. Yeah. Okay. And. Uh, I think that, that wraps it up here. You're going to have a cover over that, so I'll keep that nice and clean and also watertight, right? It's an IP rated box. IP rated yeah. box. Uh, IP rated charger, IP rated motor. Um, so they're, they're, they can go take it. They can go splash it around. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Okay. Well, let's move on. Beautiful. Beautiful work, Chris. So the box is all installed now. We actually met up with Chris the other day and filmed some footage of this going in. And it went in pretty smooth, but it looks like it's all bolted in now and ready to be wired up. business going on up here. I think this is the BMS or is this a paralleling board for the BMS? Paralleling board for the BMS. Right. BMS is buried down here centrally in the box. Right. Now what's the purpose of the paralleling boards? I've never heard that before. It simplifies the connections for our BMS. So rather than having to run 32 individual cell taps, I'm able to cut it down to 16, which will provide me a better interface for our BMS. Right. And you have the extra batteries because we parallel them for more range, right? That we did. So instead of increasing the expenses of monitoring them, we actually tie those together and that creates a, a bigger battery cell, which makes it a little more, more reliable as well, correct? That does. Yeah. Yeah. 
So that's neat, and it doesn't take up much space up here. So then these are the individual cell taps going out to the VMS here, right? Now is the VMS inside the battery box? Yeah. The one that's buried down here are three different modules. We have one master and two satellite units up here. Okay. Now how do you communicate with them since they're inside the battery box? Uh, they go through a CAN bus. Connector little, right there. CAN bus okay. Yep. okay, so that's going to go into our VCU because we're actually going to run our VMS through our VCU. It's yes, going to uh, it's going to run the whole entire car. We're going to use the new AEM EV VCU in this and uh, excited to do that and actually have something be the boss of the whole entire car. Uh, that's fantastic. Great piece of equipment. Okay. Uh, so are we done up here? Are you pretty much done? You pretty much order? done. Okay. I gotta put the, uh, put the main fuse in at the main fuse point, mm -hmm. put the lid on it and start testing. Okay. So this is just waiting, uh, basically for testing for the lid to come on and then it's, it's done. That's it. Fantastic. Now you mentioned uh, power steering earlier. We couldn't quite get to that because it's, it's literally under the battery box, yes, right? It it's is. kind of sandwiched between the bottom and there, so we can't really get to it. But for the guys that know the thing, the steering linkage comes down underneath here and comes out underneath where the gas tank normally is. Mm -hmm. So we remove the gas tank, yes, put in did. the power steering, yes, and uh, didn't film that. <laughs> no, no <laughs> uh, and then put the battery box in. Okay, so there's a lot going on up here. That's beautiful. And then it looks like over here in the corner, it looks like we have a, a heater. Yeah, right. small high voltage heater. Right, and if you know the things, there's actually a kerosene heater, right? Or a gas powered catalytic heater or so, a catalytic heater. Catalytic heater. Over here in the corner. Um, I mean, you gotta think about that. This is a vehicle built in 1973, and it's air cooled, so they couldn't use hot water to heat the cab. No hot water. Uh, it's a bit drafty. Yes. <laughs> and so they put a, a gas catalytic heater up here. Yes, they did. That just doesn't feel safe. <laughs> so we replaced that. We have a nice electric heater. This is going to run at 400 volts. Should be blow plenty of hot air over the cap. Plenty of hot air, yeah. Okay. And then over there, you've got your charge inlet. Now, we've always struggled with the thing. The last couple of things that we've had in here, I know we've completely cut out the gas filler neck because it's not big enough for the American standard, the J1772 charging standard. So what did we do on this one to kind of get around that? We got lucky and we got a little adapter that allows us to use a Tesla style plug and right. we were able to actually hide that underneath the existing gas cap. So the Tesla charge cord is a little bit smaller diameter when the plug goes into the receptacle, right? Mm -hmm. it so is. that allowed us to put it within the gas filler neck, which is all steel, so we didn't have to cut anything. Nope. So it's the original stock filler neck and all that. It is. Now what do they do so that I assume there's just an adapter they can plug in there so they can go to all the normal charging stations here in the exactly US? Exactly right. Yeah. Okay. And they can charge at Tesla stations as well as long as they're AC and not the supercharging. Correct. Right. right. Gosh, that's fantastic. And it was a real time saver. I know before just cutting that filler neck out I think it took us hours because we were, wanted to be so careful and, and yep. so this seems like a much better solution. It was. All right. Yeah. Let's move on. Okay. So we talked about the battery up front, and that was 24 kilowatt hour. Yep. And the 12 kilowatt hour in the back is this. This is basically one third of our capacity here. Small pack, we're at about, what, about 160, 70 pounds on this pack? About that, that. not yeah. too bad. All right. And we have the same parallel boards that we have in the front pack. We've got our BMS, so it's communicating to the front pack over CAN. Now this yes, is the master. Is. This will actually be BMS two. Right. The front pack will be BMS1, this will be BMS2. Okay, right. And then the VCU will sort that out on the can. It's basically receiving yes, it the will. can data and it knows front pack, rear pack. Right. Mm -hmm. And we're also monitoring the temperature. Temperature, yep. We have the yeah. transistors in there from the original manufacturer. Right. And then it looks like on that end you've got some extra room. It looks like a spare fuse holder, so you still have the internal fuse in the pack. Mm -hmm. And we also have a maintenance switch over there. Yes, we do. Yeah. And now we don't use those routinely, right? It's not an emergency cutoff. We just no. use those to kill the pack power if we want to do a little maintenance on the DC converter or charging system. Exactly right. Like I can open right. that switch and turn off my high right. voltage. I'm not going to get shocked. Right. But we can still monitor the battery through the VMS yes. and all that. Slick. Okay. Cool. Right. So I got, I'm really excited to see this thing come together. You're making some fantastic progress. Uh, what do we have left? We've got, um, Basically some electronics. Some electronics. electronics. Yeah. A little bit of low voltage, 12 volt testing, and main power fuses, and truck the wheel spin. Yeah, so it looks like in the next couple of weeks we'll probably be ready for a test drive, and 
Yes, it will be. Okay.